it's Anne over at Plant Obsessed, and today we're going to take a look in on the twins. I decided they're twins now. So it, they are half of a 55 gallon barrel, and so they're really blues twins. It's my story, I'm sticking to it. So over here is the little European night crawlers that have been grown up from cocoons, and then on the other side are the large ones that I have from Northeast Worms. So let's take a look at these guys and see what they are up to. Okay, so it's been a little over a week since we've been down here. Thought I would check in and see what we're doing. Let's be a rubber band from some vegetables. Uh, looks like my friends, the springtails, are springing. Um, whoop, got some avocados growing here. Let's take a look and see if we have any... I forgot to watch the video, of course. Um, but let's see if we've got any uh, worm balls or anything. The moisture looks really good, quite quite damp, really. Um, looks like they're doing a great job with this bedding. Let me know in the comments below if you have a difference between your European night crawlers and your red wigglers and how fast they go through the bedding. But these guys, even though they're not really big, they just are rock stars when it comes to going through paper and leaves and anything like that. Um, they just do a great job. Um, they do, I mean, they still do eat quite a bit of, you know, kitchen scraps. Whereas sometimes I have a hard time getting the African night crawlers to eat the kitchen scraps in a timely manner. The European nightcrawlers seem to do equally well with uh, kitchen scraps and with, um, with bedding. But they definitely do bedding better than the blue, um, the blue worms or the red wigglers. So these guys are doing a great job. I'm not finding any, any food. Uh, left over from last time, so I'll keep digging around and see what I find. So I had somebody ask me, you know, does it hurt the worms to fluff them uh, in the comments? And, you know, I said no. Like hurt, like physically hurt them? No. Does it annoy them? Yes. Does it create a disturbance? Yes. Um, but I think that the benefit of doing the fluffing outweighs um, any irritation the worms may experience. Okay, so I have something here, very fibrous, I don't, not sure what that is. So for me, being able to come in here and look at the worms and make sure that the moisture is good and that I'm not leaving food in here for too long, like I'm overfeeding or something like that, I think that the benefit of the fluffing outweighs any sort of uh, potential aggravation the worms may experience. So I think these are avocados, but of course we're going to have a look and see. Um, so yeah, that's an avocado plant. That's an avocado tree, wannabe tree. We've got two stems on this one, that's interesting. Not sure I've had that before. Move them down to this end. Cover them back up. Get them out of my way. But I, I think other than that fibrous thing that I found just a minute ago, the worms have eaten everything. Another vegetable rubber band. All right. So looking at this, I think the bedding could probably use a little bit more. Um, I think I started out with a good amount of, of bedding and also coconut coir to keep it nice and loose. I mean, you can see that it's not, the pieces of paper and cardboard aren't sticking together. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and, um, I don't know, put in the comments below, do you think I should run these guys like the wedge like I do blue? Or should I run them like just like a big... Um, plastic tote like I do with the other ones. Let me know in the comments below what you think about that. I've been kind of toying with the idea of running them like I do blue um, 
only feeding on one end and then slowly just letting that part. So let, let's start, let's do that this time. And then um, I'll let you guys decide. So we'll get all of the comments together from this video. And then we'll, we'll kind of look and see, do we want to run this like blue? Or do we want to run this like a regular bin? All right, so I won't like make that completely naked down there. And let's get them some bedding and some food. So right, right below the bin here is my bedding that is prepared bedding that's been sitting under here for a month or so. Some of it is super wet. Okay, and let's find them some food. I think I brought this down last time, so this has been sitting in this bag for about a week. So that's, I'm going to zip that back up. That's ugly. But, uh, so yeah, we're going to kind of move things around, spread it out a little bit, and let me get them some more bedding to put on top of that. Then I'm going to put a little bit of the old stuff, make sure I've got the microbes that I need in there. Now this bedding also has uh, the grit already in it, so I don't need to uh, add more grit. I usually just put it in with the other. All right, so these guys didn't have any food left. Let's go over to the, the big ones. This one's a pretty good size. Let's go over to the ones that I got from Northeast Worms and see how they're doing. Okay, and here we are at the, the big European Nightcrawler uh, bin. Kind of move the dry stuff off to one side here and see what we can find in here. Oddly enough, I'm not really finding that many springtails, not near as many as the others. Um, oh, look what we got here. Haven't caught them doing that in a while. So that's good. They're happy. They're making more worms. But these really are good size worms. Look at that. Yep. In comparison, they've got to be maybe five or six times, oop, dancing worm, six times bigger. So I'm not, you know, they kind of probably go through the same amount of food, even though there's physically more worms. But there's probably, you know, there was a pound of worms for this originally, is what I was given and then um, probably a pound or two of the other ones that came from my other European grow-up bin. Um, I just saw a cocoon just now. Dang it. And if you see the cocoon, let me know. It was somewhere in here. But we've got new babies. That one's probably more than a week old. So they are continuing the legacy in here. I'm also not finding food. Hmm. Concerned that might not be the European night crawler. I'm going to put him in the bucket and maybe move him over. These are in a completely different room, so I have no idea how I would get other kinds of worms in here. Um, I mean, they travel, but I don't think they're going to travel the 10 feet. No, it's more like 20 feet around the corner to come over here. So, I don't know. If you've got worms that wander, how far do you think they go? I mean, down here in the basement, it is very, very wet, damp, whatever you want to call it. And uh, conceivably, they could move along. I have had worms that have come out of the the bins before and been on the floor and didn't die because you know the the brick floor down here in the basement is um, you know it stays pretty moist except for maybe in the winter time but no I am not finding any food just some lovely beautiful big European night crawlers 
but got this all mixed up now and had to kind of make a worm ball. Is that cheating? Do you think that's cheating? Um, so we're gonna we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna feed down here at the one end, give them some more bedding, since you can tell they are they're definitely making castings here. So kind of looking at the the big worms versus the little worms. Who does a better job? That's kind of my I don't know idea behind these twin bins is. Um, you know, are the big worms going to do a better job or are the little worms? Let me know your thoughts. Is, does it matter? A pound of worms is a pound of worms or is a pound of worms that are all this big versus, you know, maybe two or three times the size or two or three times the number of worms but the same, you know, weight of worms? Do you think it matters in how much they can process? Put your comments below on that. Okay. So I took some of the dry off the bottom and then I took some wet or some dry off the top and some wet off the bottom. You can see the grit on there. Now let me grab them some food. All right. So this is pineapple pieces. This has also been down here for a week. Yikes. Actually kind of smells a little fermenty. Probably spread that out so they can not have to mess with it if they don't want to. Okay, let me get them some bedding for on top of there. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing and kind of cover it up with existing castings so the microbes can do what they ought to do. There we go. So let me know your thoughts on the big versus the little. Who takes care of things the fastest? All right, guys. Well, if you like the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.